Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is David Springall. I'm the CTO of YoSpace, and I'm here for 15 minutes to um, pick up on a topic that uh, Sebastian sort of mentioned in his presentation, which is uh, about linear content in, uh, on, on devices online. Um, and specifically to address this statement, that most major broadcasters are delivering live streams uh, online, but the challenge has been to effectively monetize them. And so, first of all, you know, why have linear content in the first place? Um, you know, a lot of the topics this morning have been around VOD, content snacking, or longer form content. And linear content, the obvious reason is nobody wants to watch the match on catch up. Um, but it's not just about sports, it's also about any other forms of ephemeral content uh, where the relevance is at the point at which it is created, um, whether that's news or it's uh, event television, you know, things like uh, the, the X Factor. Um, but there's also linear content is a lean back watching experience, and for some people that form of content engagement, maybe not the millennials, but maybe the um, slightly older people that aren't millennials, um, prefer to engage in that lean back experience. But the problem with uh, simulcast is that it is an expensive business, because if you're using it for high velocity events, it's really important that it works during that, during that uh, you know, during the match or whatever that um, key piece of um, uh, content that you're putting out. You know, <laughs> failure at that point is massively damaging to a broadcaster's brand. So the, the required levels of higher availability to support that, it doesn't come cheap. Plus, uh, plus you potentially have enhanced levels of support during that period of time. Plus you have all of the normal costs of delivering content over the web, you know, bandwidth, app development, and so on and so forth. But if you can monetize it correctly, uh, effectively, it potentially is a gold mine because of the block of users that will engage for that content for the entire period of, of time. So how can you do it? Well, some of the sort of <coughs> attempts at doing this are you put pre-rolls in front of the video. Now, that's, that's okay, but it potentially puts off users uh, getting into the content. Not so, you know, especially if you have to use a lot of them because you're trying to monetize potentially a very long dwell time. You, know, you, you calculate someone's going to be watching for an hour or eight hours in, uh, in, in an extreme case, um, and you, know, you have to put a lot of pre-rolls in. So um, that's, that's potentially quite a barrier to uh, entry for users. Um, putting auto-refreshing display advertising around the player is possible, but it um, doesn't necessarily carry the same CPMs that you would expect from video advertising. Um, and also it isn't potentially, it isn't particularly practical in modal environments um, on mobile devices where all you see is a full screen player. Um, can you reuse VOD mid-roll insertion technology? Well, there are lots of challenges um, with using the same technology that you might use for VOD mid-roll. Um, how do you identify where the ad breaks are? How do, you do, how do you do that accurately? How do you implement that same experience on every client? And that's a potentially expensive business with the fragmentation of devices uh, to get the audience reach that you, you want. And there's also synchronization issues, which is using client-side technology the, green, the top level, the, the top bit here is the, the content. Uh, the green bit is the bit you wish to replace, where the broadcast ads would be. Um, this is the event trigger, and this is the, the latency it takes to load the content, and potentially you end up exposing content and overrunning content here. Um, also, this technology um, tends to be very susceptible to ad blocker technology. It's, it's, stuff that can be blocked with an ad blocker. So let me introduce um, ourselves. Um, YoSpace, we specialize in advanced streaming management technology. It's not just ad insertion for live streaming, but that's what I'm here to talk about today. 
We've, we actually started in mobile um, and launched uh, a user-generated co user content gallery in 2004, which was very successful even at the time. It was kind of like a, a Vines before Vines started. Um, we were acquired by a publishing group um, and span out in 2009, and it's from that point we have been specialising in this particular problem. We have over 200 uh, channels in manage, under management today. We have 400 planned by April 2016, and you know our, the interest in our product um, has been, you know, f has seen phenomenal growth over the last two years. And what we do is seamless and frame accurate broadcast ad replacement in live streaming. Now, what that means is seamless means that there is no buffering, there's no pauses, black frames. And frame accurate means we cut into the replacement ads at the exact moment that it was intended by the broadcast playout. And that is on Android, iOS, um, web, uh, PC, Mac, um, Roku, Apple TV devices. One of our very first adopters, STV, um, when demonstrating this technology said, when we, when we first demonstrated this solution to our senior executives, they didn't believe the ads were being replaced. We had to set up a side-by-side -side demonstration to convince them it was really happening. And that's the thing about the technology is you don't actually realize anything's happening. And this is, this is sort of what it looks like. Um, this is um, four music, um, two iPads sitting side by side, um, and this is the uh, linear uh, content being played out. We're, we're about to come up to an ad break. Um, this is a, a promotion. Um, and I'll talk about signal management, but one of the key things about signal management is obviously knowing exactly when the break occurs, which is about now. So this is replacement advertising. These two iPads have been selected, have been given two different ads from an ad server, and I'll talk about the ad serving technology in a moment. Um, and they are, they've seamlessly sort of cut in to uh, the advertising. Um, and as you see, as you will go to the next ad, you'll see that the um, segue between uh, two pieces of ad content, again, is completely seamless. And here we are, set the second ad. On the right side, um, the iPad is um, running inside an app environment where uh, the app is able to detect uh, that the content has been replaced and provide click-through um, click click -through functionality, as well as we also support um, overlay um, you know, the graphical overlays on top of the uh, advertising as well. And as that um, uh, click-through site appeared, the, the, the content, because it's linear, continues to play underneath. When we get to, we fast forward to the end of this ad break, um, this is the very final ad in the, the ad break for these two devices. Uh, we finish and we cut back precisely to the, the live content and we continue. So um, the user actually with the exception of potentially the decoration at the, on the, 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 the right iPad, would have thought they were watching the underlying broadcast uh, ads. Box TV, um, from uh, one, of the ad, one of the channel brands that um, Box TV run, when they implemented this, they said that they dropped the use of pre-roll, and as a result, the net effect by the increased number of users engaging with the content quicker was that their ad impressions tripled overnight. The solution is modular. Um, we, we, do, we provide this because we work with large broadcasters and smaller broadcasters um, who already may have you know, significant investments in various parts of this puzzle. Um, the first part is the stream conditioning and encoding, and this is really about not just encoding the video, but also making sure that we know where the ad breaks are. That's a, that's a different problem in the US than it is outside of the US. The US TV market is much more well geared towards local insertion of advertising and therefore carries markers inside the video or the contributed video streams um, uh, that uh, uh, describe exactly where these breaks are going to occur. In Europe, this is very, this is very 
are not very common. And we've developed technologies that integrate with um, automation systems. And this is the, these are the systems that actually drive the linear playout um, to know where the frame, accurate, um, frame references are of where the ad breaks start. Um, but not only that, uh, we can take that information, augment that with scheduling information, and use that data um, to drive much more effective ad decisions. And I'll talk about that in, um, a little bit, in, in a little bit. So stream management is the, 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 the cloud piece. It sort of sits in the cloud that deals with the actual stitching of the ads, the in integration with your existing ad server technology, the ad creative normalization, that's making sure the ads all fit the same format, doing other things such as content blackout, that's the idea of being able to block out programs or replace them with alternative programming if you don't have the rights, and also the performance tele telemetry, having live, up-to-date information of who's watching, how your fill rate for the last ad break was, and so on and so forth. And then we have the presentation enhancement, which is the, uh, an optional low, uh, piece that you can put into an app environment that allows you to do the click-throughs and, and so on. In terms of automation systems, we support most of the, 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 the leading uh, manufacturers of automation. Um, in terms of ad, server, um, ad servers and ad server networks, um, again, most of the, sort of the, um, the popular brands in, in terms of ad server technology uh, and networks we've integrated with or ha um, you know, have live with, um, with customers. Removing the broadcast ads and replacing them dynamically with ads served from our ad server allows us to trade in a traditional VOD manner using the CPM pricing model. Now, this is a very key point. While this is linear, the technology that we're leveraging in terms of the ad server is effectively a VOD ad server. We present, we present a request to the ad server as if it were a piece of live uh, a, VOD, a piece of VOD content. And we use that using the, that, that telemetry we get from the automation system. So we know, uh, you know what the current program is, potentially what the next program is, um, to know that we're in a junction break, the, the break between one program and, and another. And so it can be sold. You can treat your simulcast as if it were a stitch set of VOD assets being watched in a linear fo format. And it's relatively straightforward to, to take an existing VOD platform, as we've shown, uh, and make that available um, for uh, insertion into linear content. So here's a, a checklist of things that, that come up quite regularly when we roll this technology out with uh, broadcasters. Ad copy normalization. That means that it doesn't matter how the copy, the ad copy has been originally trafficked, we take that copy and we normalize it to fit the quality of the video, the live video, and also perform functions such as audio normalization, so there's no uh, fluctuation in the, the audio levels. User tracking works in the same way that your VOD uh, user tracking works, whether that's through a, 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 an ID that you pass to us or it's through, uh, through cookies. It's effectively the same technology. Third-party networks work the same. You can hook remnant networks into your, into your ad server, or you can use a, an ad server network like you use in VOD mid-roll or pre-roll. Obviously, the system supports underrun and overrun. The idea that in live, con in live um, events, ad breaks can be shortened or extended um, based on what's happening uh, sort of with the, the content. Um, the, the ability to be able to crash an ad break is supported, so none of the uh, actual content is ever lost to advertising or replaced, accidentally replaced with advertising. There's also ad replacement policy, the ability to selectively switch on and off ad replacement based on certain programs or certain times of day. The ability for... Um, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the content or the ability to revert back to the broadcast, broadcast content if there are no or too few ads returned. 
if we, have, uh, if we don't have a full, we don't fill a full break, it's a three minute break, and we get two minutes of ads, we can insert filler or potentially use a promotion, pr promotional material. Um, you've seen the, uh, the concept of click-throughs and also the automation integration um, permitting program targeting. That means taking that metadata from what's on and feeding that to the request to the ad server so we know so the ad server is able to target better based on content, not just the user. And as I sort of previously said, this is you know, about selecting uh, ads for users rather than just the content, but you can mix the two. And because it's linear and people are engaged with the linear live content, we see incredible view through rates. Um, Canal 13 launched for the Copa America Cup in Chile um, and saw 98.7 uh, view through rates. So in summary, you can unlock ad inventory by replacing broadcast ads with online ads. It integrates with your existing VOD, ad serving technology or network. Um, and also you're the way that you're doing user tracking. Um, we can do program targeting, user targeting. Um, we can reduce the need for pre-roll, and thus um, reducing the time for all the users engaged with the content. It's flexible enough to support third-party networks, SSP platforms. Um, we have an end-to-end -end arch modular architecture, so we can take care of the whole end-to-end, -end, or we can do certain parts, and the business case is extremely strong. Every customer that we have launched has uh, quote, uh, quotes over 96% view through rates. And with that, I thank you very much, and if there are any questions. Thank you, David. Um, we're running a bit late, so I think I've got time to take just one question from the audience. Um, anyone got one? Um, yeah, the chap over here on the left. Um, could we get a microphone across quickly? Just throw it. It's fine. He looks like a good catcher. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can probably do with the mic. Yeah, go on. Go for it. Uh, Spencer Charters from uh, Shaw Media in Canada. Uh, in, in the markets where you've operated, um, in, are you seeing any markets where the live stream is actually being measured by the currency? And if so, how are those operators uh, making the trade-off between uh, counting this towards their live ratings versus selling it uh, on a digital basis? Um, we are seeing, uh, certainly uh, it, we have a customer in the US that, 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 that does that. Um, uh, they use Nielsen. Um, but the, the ratings-based currency isn't anywhere near that which you get with user-targeted replacement. So, you know, the, the, the ratings-based um, uh, sort of the, the idea of exposing broadcast ads from, f to get the ratings, um, you know, is simply the, ba the backstop. Um, you know, you just get such a great, much better CPM if you target. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um,